Now, in what may be described as a final offensive in its fight against smuggling, the federal government has announced the immediate suspension of fuel and diesel supply to petrol stations within 20 kilometers radius to all Nigerian borders. The directive is being implemented under the Operation Swift Response Exercise. The Petroleum Products Pricing Regulatory Agency says this uh, since the launch of the exercise in August, the volume of fuel consumed daily in Nigeria has dropped from 61 million litres to about 50.22 million litres. The PPPRA says the decline is an indication that the bulk of petrol supplied was being smuggled to neighbouring countries. Well, joining me or joining us now is uh, the MD CEO, Taras Capital, Nemeka Obiariri. Good morning. Thank you for joining us at TVC Breakfast. Now, uh, there has been uh, several arguments to this uh, move by the government to, you know, stop uh, the uh, movement of uh, fuel um, or petrol to neighboring uh, communities around the borders and there has been calls in line to that uh, move that uh, there should be liberalization of uh, the markets but then we know that the gov the president has been opposed to this move and his uh, reasons is corruption uh, yes his reasons is corruption with corruptions we're talking about here, the corruption is more amplified by retaining the subsidy regimes. How so? I will explain to you. You remember that during the Desiani era, when they told us that we are consuming 47 million liters a day, yeah. we all screamed and we all wailed. Of course, the subsidy mm. probe discovered that half of what they claimed that we consumed was actually not imported. Of course, when Kachuku Ibe took over in 2015, he even confirmed that our consumption should not be more than 28 to 32 million liters a day. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you look at the reports of the U.S. Energy Administration Agency, that is within that range. Now, think about this. We are told that we import 61 million liters a day. It's not true. Subtract 35 million liters, even the worst case scenario, from 35, 60, 60. We have excess of 25 million liters being brought into this country, according to them in quote. If you look at what the NNPC spent over the last one year, on petroleum imports and subsidy. We're talking about over, over $13 billion. What they consumed, or what few click of people spent was more than what the state governors, that is of them collected from the federal accounts over the last one year. But you know, mm -hmm. if you say we should remove fuel subsidy, remember what happened in 2012, January? See, do you want the reenactment? There is no reenactment. Nigerians have to understand what is happening. They find that Ignorance is the worst thing that is killing this country. The worst form of ignorance we live in this Nigeria. Removing the subsidies, so we argue, will impact the poor. Who are the poor? Where are the poor? The extreme poor Nigerians do not live in the areas where they consume these products. 60% of these products are consumed within Lagos and Ogun State. Mm -hmm. And in Port Harcourt and other areas. Those who actually enjoy the subsidy are the middle class and the upper class. And the few that are making us dry. Opening up that market will do one thing. We don't have subsidy on kerosene. My grandmother uses kerosene. It's not subsidized. And you will not hear anybody talking about exporting kerosene or smuggling it to Chad or to the Niger Republic because it is fully decentralized. The same thing will happen to PMS. Let me tell you, if you open up that market within one to two years, modular refineries will spring up. Now, wasn't that what um, the PDP uh, presidential candidate tried, attempted to do in his manifesto, talking about sell off or selling some of the refineries and all of that and bringing in privatization, basically. But then you see the reaction from Nigerians. Yeah. Which reaction from Nigerians? It was a, a case of trust. Most Nigerians that acted did not act that the policy was wrong. But they were looking at the person that was coming to implement it. We listed the access to himself. That was the issue. It was not against the policy itself. Let me explain to you. Over the last three years, we claimed that we spent $389 million by NMPC report. Mm to refurbish the refineries, yet they are not producing. 144 billion naira gone down the drain. We spent 1.46 trillion naira subsidy. 1.46 trillion thrown into the production account and shared by the governors with a very clear cost structure can provide mass transit buses that will ameliorate whatever But if we, if, if we know about that this is this the, the level of corruption in these things, how, why are we not nipping it in the board? Yeah. Because uh, no, the political will is that what it is It is lacking? not just the political will. I am sure those that surrounded the government president, they are not advising him well. Ask yourself this question. We are the only country in the whole of the West African coast that is still subsidizing this terrible behavior. 
And I will give you another example. PEF, for every liter of petroleum product imported in this country, the, those guys in NPC collect 7 naira 30 kobo as PEF. That is 21.9 billion liters. 7 naira 30 kobo on it, 158 billion. Mm. But in actual sense, 75 percent of this volume are not PEF allowable. That simply means All where right. are the rest of the monies? Mm. But if you remove it, these things will equalize. I will tell you the truth. Ask yourself this question. Why is Shell not building refinery in Nigeria? They have in South Africa. Mm. Why is Total not building refinery here? They have in South Africa. Right. It is very simple. The, no investor, no investor that is honest and transparent mm. will play in a regimented market that is where there is so much corruption and inefficiency. All right. All right. If you open up that market and liberalize, I will tell you, in the next 24 months, Modular refineries will so come Spring up that Nigeria will be a better place for it. All right, Nemeka right. Obiariri, thank, thank, thank you for your insight on this issue. You're watching TVC Breakfast. In what may be described as a final offensive in its fight against smuggling, the federal government has announced the immediate suspension of fuel and diesel supply to petrol stations within 20 kilometers radius to all Nigerian borders. The directive is being implemented under the Operation Swift Response Exercise. The Petroleum Products Pricing Regulatory Agency says since the launch of the exercise in August, the volume of fuel consumed daily in Nigeria has dropped from 61 million litres to about 50.22 50, 50 million litres. The PPPRA says the decline is an indication that the bulk of petrol supply has been smuggled to neighbouring countries. Well, joining us now is uh, the MDC Oterius Capital, Namika Oberere. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right, so we see that this is happening, and of course, the federal government is saying this is to stop illegal uh, smuggling in, in those border communities. But uh, there's a concern here, the plight of the people staying in that area. Now, since this has stopped, it means that the, the source of livelihood will stop there. The economy of, that, of those areas will stop there. So how do we handle all of the situation? Um, if you look at 20 square kilometers, that simply means those in satellite town. Mm. First Thank stack, Amor Dauphin, Ojo, will not have fuel. The base stations will not have fuel. That means even your communication networks may be down. Yes, mm. because they have come out to say that. Exactly. Yes. And this is an opiate. That border will not be closed forever. At a time they will lift it. The smuggling will still continue. The incentives are there for the smuggling to continue. Because those who are supposed to guard the border, the agencies, the customs are part of the cartel. So is, is this uh, some, an indictment on the customs and those agencies? Indictment on the customs, indictment on those that make rules and policies for us for thinking backward. If we want to make, I'll give you a simple illustration. This record of consuming 60 million liters a day started in January 2016. Go and check our records. Under the heady days of Desiane Alice and Madweke, we were told we consumed 47, 50 million liters, and we cried out. The National Assembly did research and discovered it was not true. And even Kachuku Ibe said it clearly. If you rec look at records from even global agencies, our consumptions cannot be more than 35 million liters max. And if you look at if you subtract 35 million liters from 61 million liters, we have 26 million liters unaccounted for. If you multiply it, every year we lose 5.6 billion dollars on but this we're madness. we're not asking these questions. We are now, not listen, getting the results. If I have the opportunity of talking to the governor's forum in, for just 15 minutes, I tell you they will lead the war front to stop this madness. Every year, from subsidy to ghost importation figures to smuggling, we lose 2.7 trillion naira to some few fat rooks. If we decide to liberalize that sector, 2.7 trillion into the virtual account. The governors, each and, each and every state will have additional 44 billion naira. So liberalization of yes. the moving fuel subsidy. Yes. And let me tell you what will happen. If, for example, Imo State, my state, has additional, maybe gets additional 42 billion into the coffers, if we decide to dedicate 23 billion to do mass transit buses, fully fueled, free transport, for two years, 23 billion will sustain 1,000 interstate buses. Mm. Free without any cobble, any of the states, and it will help us to biometric uh, to keep keep our data. We cannot say for the only way you can participate in this mass transit bus is if you show evidence you're from the state. Do data, collect it, even link it to tax. Mm. You know these things are not skyrocket science. We can't so continue. So why are we finding it difficult to do? It is strange because I am very very sure. We've done these numbers. I'm a research analyst. Yeah. If you give me 15 minutes with Nigerian governors forum and I look at I don't. 
Five people at the NMPC are controlling 2.7 trillion naira ghost and subsidy consumptions that are not there, that can be controlled. If you liberalize the dust oil and gas sector, this madness will stop. How we bother to ask ourselves this question? Are we poorer than Chad? Are we poorer than Niger Republic? Not. So why have they liberalized their markets? And we are still keeping this bad behavior. We are only ending up feeding and creating wealth for few fat cars to the detriment which of the, the masses. Which the president also talked about, that there are certain persons who, uh, you know, are own the wealth of, of this nation. There's a few persons. But, but then if we notice things are there, why are we finding it difficult to nip in the bud? Because issues of corruption is what the government said it is going to challenge. To be honest with you, I'm a Christian. Proverb 25.5 was very simple. If you surround a king with wicked people, he will rule wickedly. He won't even know that he's ruling unrighteously. They are the people advising Mr. President. 15 minutes with Nigerian governor's room. I will show them the numbers in black and white. Why they should not allow few people to control and destroy this economy. Remove that petroleum subsidy. Each state in Nigeria will receive additional for two billion into the traditional account. If we decide to go by the order of what Abacha did on that PTDF mm. yes. and decide to dedicate these funds for infrastructure and intervention mechanism to stop the impact. And I will tell you, even if you liberalize, the PMS cannot say more than two hundred million anywhere okay, okay. in the Nigeria. Okay, mm. looking at look, looking at what you're saying now, liberalize and we save some money. We save huge money, no, huge money. Okay, but there's also the concern of uh, relooting the money. You can't relute it. I will tell you, it is all about putting the right framework in place. We can decide to, if we decide today to What's remove that the right framework? That right framework is to put an intervention fund. We can call it a, a, a form of PTDF, but let the state co control it. You understand now? This and they will not be able to loot that no, money? No, they will. They we can sit down, see. If they, if they give me the mandate, free of charge pro bono, I will develop that framework. I heard the government of Nigeria. Free framework. Mm. I will develop that framework that will be debated anywhere. Foolproof framework on how we can mitigate the religion of this money and how we can use it in the next two years. People will look back and say, wow, so we have been wallowing in destruction. And your name will be written in gold. Gold. Nemeka Biarri, thank you so much for your insight on this topic. You're welcome.